the U.S. tried to drag its China smear campaign into this year's Munich Security Council conference. But was anyone listening? Stay with a debate on westlessness unfolded at this year's Munich Security Conference, which wrapped up on Sunday. Global leaders weighed in on whether the West has lost its way when it comes to having a shared understanding and joint strategy for a new era. China's State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi gave a speech calling on the world to bring the West and East together in shared commitment to multilateralism. The U.S. State of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo claimed the West is winning. Why is the West, especially Europe, worried about Westlessness and what is the real trend of history? Two guests who were actually at the conference are joining me today. They are Mr. Wang Huiyao, President of the Center for China and Globalization, currently in Berlin, and uh, Tang Bei, Associate Professor at the School of International Relations and Public Affairs at Shanghai International Studies University. Welcome to both of you. So, Mr. Wang, let me go to you first. Uh, why? this debate, why this theme, what is the sentiment behind this topic? I think that uh, this year they had actually uh, uh, the Munich Security Conference has come up with the theme of Westlessness and I think it's basically because uh, the West now is uh, facing a lot of uh, challenges and also a uh, dilemma and then actually they are now trying to find out why the world has become less Western and uh, what are the reasons within and without, inside and outside, and also uh, trying to uh, internally uh, get uh, a new uh, consensus and a new uh, thinking. So I think it's really uh, that uh, shows the world is actually developing very fast and then it's more multipolar world and more uh, country emerging, particularly China. And then that's why they, I think the, the uh, across the Atlantic that the, uh, the Munich Security Conference get together and then talk about this structure. It's to reflect, uh, of course, the, uh, the West uh, is getting less uh, uh, influential, but also, on the other hand, China and the other countries are rising. But I think it's also it's really important that uh, the world is uh, probably, it's, uh, probably needs some new narrative now. We don't have to divide the world into West, East, and all the rest. We should uh, really uh, become uh, a common uh, uh, human beings uh, come together and for the common future of the mankind. So, so this is probably we need a new narrative and new thinking, and then uh, that's also another thing I think that uh, this Munich Security Conference is talking about. Mm. We have so many new ideas uh, is talking about that, that. But also uh, we have to be careful that uh, not just targeting China as as the uh, 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 the, the things that are holding back the West. Okay. Well, at least uh, still we saw quite a bit of uh, um, targeting on China. For instance, we see the United States. Uh, uh, three prominent uh, politicians, you know, ramping up their rhetoric on China at the conference uh, over Huawei and uh, other things. For instance, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo described Huawei and other Chinese state-backed tech companies as Trojan horses for Chinese intelligence. U.S. State of Defense Mark Esper said Beijing was carrying out a nefarious strategy through Huawei and, and uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi warned that uh, accepting Chinese domination of technology would be akin to choosing autocracy over democracy. Uh, Professor Tang, what do you think the U.S. government is trying to promulgate at the conference there? Well, actually, if you have a hammer in your hand, you look everything just like nails. I think this kind of accusement is absolutely without any coherent logic behind it. So I think this actually reflects that the deep inconfidence of the United States in their own, st on their own systems and the values. So it just want to find some outside enemy to justify how they are performing badly. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Wang, your take yes? on Mr. Wang, your take on these volley of accusations. Yeah, I found this uh, actually very, uh, very also a little uh, uh, a surprise to me as well. I was uh, at the Munich Security Conference last year. Mm. Uh, last year was the Vice President Prince, uh, Vice President Prince spoke about uh, made a speech, but it's only uh, touched upon the China as well. But this year was to my surprise that the Secretary Pompeo and uh, Defense Secretary Esper, both of them speak 
uh, on a very large uh, extent on China, particularly mm -hmm. the defense secretary, almost 90% of his speech was based on China. So we see that uh, uh, they are getting, uh, Americans are getting uh, less uh, confident and then really uh, uh, be, uh, putting a lot of their internal, external uh, problems on, on China as a scapegoat. So right. I think that is not really a right approach. I'm glad to see uh, for Mr. Wang Yi come out and uh, defended the China's position, but also opened to the multilateral system. And also, I, I, I noticed that in the conference, uh, a lot of European friends actually yeah. uh, you know, proposed that we'll why get to can't that we have a multilateral approach, yeah, we'll get a to that multilateral approach to solve those differences. We'll get to that in just okay. a moment. I want to take a look at um, Mr. Wang Yi's response. Basically, he was quite uh, strong in his words. For instance, he said, I don't want to waste our time re reacting to all the things they said. Basically, I can say that all these accusations against China are lies. He also said that the root cause of all those problems lies in the fact that some people in the U.S. are reluctant to accept the rapid development development and revitalization of China as a socialist country. Interestingly, some people pointed out that when Mr. Wang was talking about major country relations, Russia actually ranked number one ahead of the United States. So Tang, uh, Professor Tang, does that signal a shift in priority or style in China's diplomacy? Oh, uh, well, it seems to me that uh, what our Minister Wang Yi said is that we have a much more urgent domestic issues to deal with rather than quarrel, you know, just a fight in wars with the United States because it just make no sense. If, 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 the, you know, the, the if the other side, they just do not trust you and do not want to dialogue, so what is the point to, to, to to waste time in that discussion. So that is my point, and I think that uh, the shift of priority is kind of a, a pragmatic and a practical choice for Chinese uh, politic, uh, diplomatic mm. policy at this moment. Yeah, well, analysts are also saying, and this time uh, I'm quoting from a foreign policy article which, are, which says that the dire American warnings about the threat from Beijing fall on their ears at the Munich Security Conference, and the U.S. and Europe, uh, Europe are speaking a different language on China. Uh, Professor Wang, is this what you perceive as well during the conference? Well, certainly there was a lot of uh, di di diverse voices. I mean, of course, on our hand, the U.S. Uh, was saying the West is, uh, is strong, but uh, we, uh, we hear also French President Macron said the, the, the West is, uh, is, is weakening. And, uh, and even the uh, Ambassador Wolfgang Ichigen, the, the chairman of, uh, of Munich Security Conference, said, you know, within and without the, uh, the Western, we see the, the tendency of, of changing of that. So it's a, it's a reflection, even on China and uh, uh, we hear that uh, Defense uh, Secretary of, uh, of Germany, AKK, was saying, you know, basically on, on, the, on, the, on the 5G, you know, if they meet the standards, we should really, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the company are should be treated equal. So, so you, you see, suddenly see different voices there, and mm. uh, you can see a failed at, at the presence on, on, the, on the side. There's a, there's a different voice. I mean, Secretary, uh, former Secretary of U.S. Uh, John Kerry joined uh, uh, one of the events organized by CCG. And actually, he also sh expressed a different opinion, yeah. even he is an American uh, politician. So, so I think, you know, it's a diverse uh, voices, but we have actually uh, heard quite a lot okay. of different voices. All right. Well, concerning the voices, there is one voice which gone viral on Chinese social media from Madame Fu Ying, the chairwoman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of China's uh, top legislature, the National People's Congress. Let's listen to uh, what she asked Pelosi uh, concerning the company Huawei. How come if Huawei's technology with 5G is introduced into Western countries, then it will threaten the political system? Do you really think the democratic system is so fragile that it could be threatened by this single high-tech company of Huawei? So, Professor Wang, I want to ask you this to wrap up. Uh, after she stood up and asked this question, there were people who were applauding among the audience. What do you think that says about the kind of um, fight that the U.S. has been putting on with its European partners as to what to do with the Chinese company? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, but then uh, Ambassador Fu is absolutely right. You know, it's uh, absolutely absurd because... Uh, we, we are now uh, human beings are making a lot of new uh, inventions, are making a lot of new 
advancement. We can't refuse of the of the uh, joint achievement of mankind. That the Huawei achieved the 5G technology because it supplied to billions of uh, smartphone users, hundreds of thousands of uh, transmission stations, and the uh, test in the area had advanced this so uh, you know such an advanced technology. Why should the, uh, the human being refuse to to do to to, to use that? And, uh, and making uh, all the uh, you know national strategy to, to contain that, but, but, you know if for that has happened, you know what about uh, all the software China is using, uh, or what about the uh, airplane we are riding and the car we are riding? If we everything is national security, then uh, then we are getting into really a decoupled world. So it doesn't really make sense. We should not refuse the the the, the, the achievement of the of the mankind, which is five G is based on the technology one G, two G, three G, and four G, like just like Ambassador Fu said. So I think we should really be realistic, realistic and also trying to really separate politics and from business and from market and then also from the company. You should not really uh, use uh, this as a, as, a, as a weapon, as a, as a gimmick to really contain and also develop, uh, you know, uh, to stop the development of China. So I think we have to okay. really, uh, you know, trust the company, build up the trust. I think that's the most important. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Wang Huiyao, President of the Center for China and Globalization, and Tang Bei, Associate Professor at the School of International Relations and Public Affairs at the Shanghai International Studies University. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the application called CTTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CTTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got the point.